Welcome back to Dominique Medici Art Academy. In day seven, we were looking at Notan. Today, we're introducing a mid-tone. Okay, let's get into it. In the previous lesson, we just used the white and the black to create the pattern of light and dark. Now, we didn't go to the full strength as we see here. I wanted to reserve that for today. So what we'll do is now looking at our form, let's break it up into light, mid, and dark. So we do need to swap out this image and of course just a, and it's done. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder if I missed my uh, true calling as a magician. Okay, so in this case, what we want to do now is take a look at where our dark is. Our dark for sure is grouping with that 11, which of course, you know, in a notan, our one and our 11 are the two main values. Now we're seeing we have this six and that's our midtones. I probably would group my dark pretty much down where we see it through here including the most of the cast shadow. But I think the mid-tone is maybe what I would do just, just slightly differently um, because I love the way it curves around the form and it gives us a feeling of that shape turning in the distance. And there's something just about these hard edges that just flattens it a little more than maybe we need to. So our mid-tone will start creeping a bit further now, sometimes what you can do is just make a little very faint dotted line just to get a sense of maybe where that shape would be. So again, I'm using a little bit of a combination of both of the images just so I can get a sense of where that shape is. So I'll go in and just fill this in. Now, in this case, I'm using a 2B, right? We're doing a little bit quicker this week, but again, you feel always feel free to use whatever materials you want, but an HB will help you to build it up slower, build it up more gradually. The 2B is fine. It's just, um, we have to be a little more careful because it gets darker faster. So second pass, the angle is just slightly different. You can see this is the third pass already and we're already pretty close to the value in the lower part of the sphere. Right, so my fourth pass across is going to be a little more careful and I'm just trying to fill in the bits that are a bit lighter, trying to avoid any bits that are already getting too dark. Right, we have to be especially careful when we're coming up to this line. It, it's so easy to just um, keep that line there by going across the edge, right? If we're careful, we can really completely blend it so that you just would be totally unaware that there was anything that was there before. And if you can still see it, that means there's still some more work to do. Right, again, remember, you can just use your eraser to slightly dab out to remove any buildup. I'm getting a little bit of a band through here, so I might need to spend a little time working that out. So what I want to do is just try and even this up here, even this up a little bit in here, see if we can get it looking a little smoother. Learning how to repair, which is not a bad thing, right? It's almost inevitable that we will make mistakes and knowing how to recover is as important as learning any other skill. We need to know how to even something up when it's gone blotchy. This is a valuable lesson in drawing, which will definitely extend into painting. So there are ways where we can blend using stumps, paper towels, smudging, right? But we don't want to rely on any of that. We just want to gain complete control of the pencil. And then once we have control, then yeah, feel free. Use the shortcuts. Okay, right, we have our mid-tone. It's looking all right. There's a little bit of pattern, but I mean, a little bit of spotting or blemishing, 
but it's pretty consistent. It doesn't stand out too much. So now we're gonna take a 6B, right? With the softer pencils, they tend to go dull pretty quickly. So one little technique is you'll notice that every few strokes, I just rotate the pencil in my hand so that as we are drawing, we are also sharpening the pencil as we work. Really making sure that we're varying the direction with each layer or each pass. All right, so I'm taking some care here to really keep my dark shape very consistent. Now, of course, right, different, different materials, we could get to that black much quicker, right? If we were using charcoal or charcoal pencil, no problem, you hit that right away. But there's something nice about pencil. It takes us longer, it's much more layered. And that's good, right? That really helps us to gain control. It's a slower approach, but slow and steady, right? See, we're beginning to get that distinction, right? So it's interesting how before this looked dark, right? As soon as you start seeing a dark come in, it's shocking how light this begins to look. You'll notice that more and more. You see, this is one of the real reasons that we want to get very comfortable with this concept of three values. Inevitably, when we look at something more complex like a portrait, you're gonna see so many different values. And if we don't understand that everything complicated um, can be broken down into just three, if we don't understand that and why that's important, then it's very likely that we're gonna to get totally lost when we're rendering something because we'll forget that underlying simplicity. Right? And that's the key. It's the key in all great work, right? There is an underlying simplicity uh, when you break it down. That's the goal of what this is all about. Right? It's beginning to come alive, right? So the benefit of working this way is we really begin to master our materials we begin to master ourself in the sense that we learn something about patience. We learn something about being systematic, about persevering, right? All very important qualities for developing our work, and developing ourself. Now, coming to the background, now I'm not gonna shade in all of this background just because it will take too long, but I'll do a little bit just to differentiate the back wall from the plane of the table. And if you have time, feel free to shade in much more. Okay, so there we have it. We've broken down our form into three values. And this is really the beginning of learning about the value scale, which is coming up in our next lesson. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.